Another time that our family has found to be really special and important, um, we didn't always make it important. Sometimes we were busy with other things, but since we're home a lot right now with the coronavirus, we've found that meal times are indeed a really great time to spend as a family. Uh, if we're not actively talking with our children and talking about things that are interesting to them and asking them questions, then sometimes it's not as pleasant and as enjoyable for the family to have meal time together. Sometimes we're only asking them to do the right thing, to eat their food or to sit up or to have manners. But sometimes we can remember that having conversations and sharing about our day, sharing about our work, sharing about our family, uh, maybe even sharing stories from our childhood, these things can be very good and a very good way to spend our dinner time or our lunch time. And children can learn a lot of things by uh, having conversations as a family. They can learn how to take turns, how to listen, and be interested in other people. They can learn how to use polite words and a kind voice. They can learn how to speak loud enough or sometimes not speak too loud. Um, and they can learn to answer questions and ask questions. And all of these things are conversations that we can have, especially at the table when we're eating together. Children love to learn about our lives and our work and things that we've done and places we've been and people we know. So we can share that with them. Our family looks at conversation ideas online. So we can have ideas of things we can talk about as a family at mealtime. And you can find these online as well. Or you can also use our conversations that we use in our videos, our English fun videos. And I always include those conversations in the show notes also. And you can practice those with your children at the table too. And for parents who are getting their children ready for interviews, school interviews, um, K1 or P1. Um, it's one of the best ways to help our children to get ready to have an interview and talk with an adult is to practice talking with them every day. So they can practice talking with an adult by having conversations with us and having positive, fun conversations with us can really help them to be well prepared for a P1 interview or K1 interview. And these conversations can be at the dinner table. They can be when we are waiting for something or when we're riding transportation, the MTR or the bus. All of these different times that we're walking together, we can share these conversations with them. And this helps them in English and also in your native language. Just having conversations is so wonderful and uh, we can really learn to do that. Sometimes we can, we don't know what to say with our children when we spend a lot of time with them, but we can ask them questions and get more ideas or we can look online and get more ideas of ways to have fun conversations uh, with our children. Also remember that children learn by repeating things. And usually if we're repeating something enough that we get bored, that's usually just when they're starting to really learn. So repetition is very good for children. Uh, repeating stories, reading the same story more than one time, uh, repeating songs, learning songs and singing them over and over, repeating consonant sounds and vowel sounds, um, the phonics, blends, repeating conversations, practicing different conversations, uh, there's many different things that we can practice doing with our children, repeating activities and fun things that we do together. The next time they do it, they'll, they'll know they might have a new idea about something to do or they might do it a little more easily. Repeating exercises and getting, um, getting energy out during the day. These are great things to do. So repetition is really important. Sometimes as grown-ups we forget this and we uh, just want to do things one time and then do the next thing, but to stop and pause and do it again and ask them if they want to do it again is really useful. Um, and that's something I always have to remind myself with my girls. Singing is a great way to learn a language. So it's a great way to learn English. Songs can help 
children remember things. Tunes are easy for children to remember. Uh, it can be easy to learn and remember the words from the songs, even if they don't know what the words mean or what the song is talking about. They can learn how to sing a song, which is great. Uh, it's good because they can practice making sounds. The sounds of the words, the, the more they do that, the more comfortable they can get. The better their English can sound. So this is the same way that babies learn when they learn their first language. It's the same way that they learn to, to speak is by just practicing making the sounds. And sometimes um, we can do that extra when we're singing because the song maybe repeats the same words over and over, so it's a great way to do it. It's great for children just to practice sounds and the way that things sound. And when you're singing, uh, and maybe you've noticed with the videos, children don't always want to sing along with me or with you. Uh, sometimes they just want to listen. Many times, many children just want to listen and that's okay. They are learning a lot by listening to you sing. And you can invite them and ask them to sing with you, but if they choose not to, it's okay. Uh, you will probably hear them later, maybe in their bed singing to their dollies or their stuffed animals. And they're listening to these songs, they're learning the songs, and they'll use them, they'll sing them, and they'll learn them very well. So also, not just English songs, sing songs to them in your native language. Sing songs you love, your favorite songs, sing them over and over so they, the children can learn them too. Uh, I find that if uh, I'm frustrated or not patient with my children, Sometimes it's useful for me to sing a song and it's useful for me to become more patient and it's useful for them to calm down and to be able to listen to a song as well. And that can be a very positive way to handle our frustrations or impatience. But we can also sing when we're happy and when we're enjoying life and enjoying things. We can sing when we're walking with the children just around the house or out and about, shopping, writing transportation many different times, sing many different times, many songs, and sing every day. That'll be really great. Don't worry about the way that your voice sounds. Sometimes we can worry that maybe our singing isn't very nice or doesn't sound very good. But if we can sing uh, with confidence and with enjoyment, it doesn't matter what our voice sounds like. Our children will enjoy it. Your voice is a special way for your children to connect with you. Your singing is a gift to your child. And don't be shy about singing, just sing and enjoy it. And you'll probably find that the more you sing, the more you will enjoy your voice. So that's kind of a benefit also. Singing games are a lot of fun. So with singing games, we're maybe listening to music or you're singing and you're moving with the, with the child, swaying and rocking back and forth, uh, maybe it's something like London Bridges, something like that. And singing games are great bonding time with children. They really enjoy doing these. And remember about repetition. They enjoy doing them over and over and over. So enjoy that time with them. It's very good for their physical development also. Gentle human touch is very important to every person. and. For some children, it may take time to get used to physical touch and gentle touch. Some actually want maybe a tighter hug or a firmer touch, um, but giving kind touches is very important for every day. And um, this is something that I have to practice and learn with my girls too. And something that I have to remember even when we're together all day sometimes we can forget to touch our children and to encourage them and to hug them and to kiss them and hold them. So this is encouraging and useful for us when we're home with our children. Even if they're, they're bigger children, they still need a type of touch, maybe just a high five or a pat on the back. So that's a good thing to remember. In our, in our videos, we also looked at the uh, God's Great Plan Storybook Bible. And this is a really great book. You can get it at a bookstore or order it online. It has the traditional Chinese characters and it also has English on, on every page with every story. It has both of those things. It has really fun drawings and pictures that the children will like to, to look at and, and they will love listening to it. The poetry, the English is actually a, 
poetry. So it's rhyming and it's really beautiful poetry. So we enjoy reading that at, in our family. That book is um, in the videos. I started at the beginning, but then had to skip some of the stories in the middle so I could go to the stories about Jesus. And then we read stories about Jesus's life and uh, his death and how he died on the cross for our sins. Uh, Jesus loves us so much and how Jesus rose again from the, from the dead and how he is the way to heaven. So we got to read these stories in our videos as well. We didn't read this one in our video, but another story that I love to read you know, because um, for English learners, when we're learning English, it's important to know that one of the most influential English books is the Bible. So it's very good for children to learn the Bible. So the, the Jesus Storybook Bible is also another great book to read to children. It has really wonderful words. Um, the stories are very exciting the way that they tell them and describe things it's very fun for children and this book is also in chinese so it has the, the traditional characters and you can read um, the book in chinese as well so it's the same book but this one has it one in english and one in chinese so that's um, the jesus storybook bible and we we've read that one with our family and we really enjoy that one as well so i wanted to share with you about that the other stories that we were reading for our story time in the book, in the YouTube videos, I never read a story that had pictures um, because uh, it, you need to have copyright permission to do that, but you, sh you can and you should read children's stories books that have lots of pictures for your children to enjoy while you're reading the story. Um, and they don't need to be English books, they can be books in your language that they can enjoy with you. Uh, but we did read Aesop, Aesop's Fables in the videos, and that's because Aesop's Fables are very, very old. They were written a long time ago, so they, it's free for everybody to be able to read and, and show the pictures of, of that, the old ones online or uh, in the videos. So we read Aesop's Fables, and I include two different links you can look, and one of the links has many, 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 many stories. And the Aesop's Fables are great stories. They usually have animals and they talk about um, good lessons for the children, for their character, for their life, for their relationships and their friendships. So the children really enjoy the stories. They're very short. And one of the links has the book that has many, 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 many fables. And there's another link, the second link, that has only a few fables and they are written with very simple words so that the children can read them. They are in a children's reader so the children can read the stories for themselves. So you can enjoy reading Aesop's fables with your children. There's lots of other uh, English books online that you can read. Uh, there's even videos of other people reading stories, English stories online, and you can enjoy those. Likely also in your own language, you could find those stories as well. So reading aloud to children is so important in English and also in your native language. You can also just tell stories. It doesn't have to be from a book. You can just share and tell stories. You can make up stories or tell ch stories about your childhood, share stories about your day, or just retell a story that you've heard before. And this can be a lot of fun for the children and for us. I love reading aloud to my girls. In fact, I always bring a book with me when we go out traveling and I read them when we're waiting or when we're on the MTR or on the bus and we always enjoy reading stories together. These moments can be really special and important to your children and to their learning. Um, so we've talked a lot about uh, phonics and reading, singing, um, all of these things. Uh, we do a little bit of counting on the videos, not very much, just a little bit. So you can keep working with your children in English for their numbers, for counting, knowing their numbers out of order, and learning math facts so you can help them with uh, learning English numbers. Uh, my daughter that's in P1, she is working on learning all of her numbers in Cantonese and learning her numbers out of order in Cantonese and learning her uh, math facts in Cantonese. So um, that's something that you could think about for English also is to practice learning uh, math in English.
So that'll be great. Uh, one more thing that I want to talk about is the aspect of the activities and play and how important play is for children's learning. Uh, we, I did sensory activities or motor skills development. So um, writing or painting or playing with things, using their hands for fine motor skills and also large motor skills, doing exercises, jumping, all of those things. So play is actually very important for children, learning to use their bodies. A child who can, um, who can move their body in, in the best way, a child who can use their hands the best that they can, and a child who can be comfortable in their learning environment, that their senses are not um, bothering them in their learning environment. So when, when we help our children to have sensory activities, when they can do things with their hands, when they can sit still and have control over their body, they can be better learners at school. So these are, these are really important things for children to do. Play is a very important part of learning for a young child. So having, um, having activities that engage their senses and that help develop their motor skills and their body movement are really important. And I shared one at the e end of each lesson um, for the video. So I would encourage you to watch those with your children and continue doing some of those things. I am finding this to be more and more important for my daughters as they are learning to read and write and uh, have good learning habits. I'm finding that I, I actually need to give them more time to play. I need to give them more time to use their muscles um, for big movements and exercise and all of these things because that actually prepares them to be able to be a better learner when they're sitting at a table with a pen in their hand. So um, using, using crafts, so doing lots of coloring, drawing, folding, cutting is very important, and gluing things. Um, these things help to uh, increase their hand strength and to develop their hand-eye coordination, which is really, really important. And like I said, I'm having to do more of these things with my daughters right now. Uh, helping them with painting, Play-Doh, squeezing Play-Doh and clay. These are also things that help them with their hand strength and are very useful. Uh, exercise and developing a child's core muscles. So there's their um, stomach muscles, basically. Uh, having a strong core helps a child to be able to learn better, to be able to sit at a desk and to pay attention in the classroom. So helping them to be stronger in their core also helps them to learn. So interesting, right? And um, there's a lot of suggestions that I did in the videos where you can find more ideas, especially for sensory activities. We didn't do a lot of sensory activities, but you can find more ideas online. Um, there's also a lot of toys that can help children with their fine motor skills. Elise showed us how she likes to build with the magnet tiles and Anna showed us how to build with Legos. Those are some things. Um, games, there's also a lot of family games that you can play with children. And I showed you a couple of those where they have to use their hands and be careful with their hand movements. So that's another great way to help prepare them for learning and prepare them for, for school. Uh, we used Ooblek, which is cornstarch and water. We played with that and that was fun. And using different water toys is, is another great thing. And at the very end of our videos, I had a celebration tea party, one with Ariana and one with Elise. And we were practicing conversations with that and just celebrating, sometimes just taking something very normal in our day, eating, and doing something to make it special. For us, it was to make a tea party, to have their food in, in, on special plates and be able to pour. These can be really fun things for the children. So that's something that you can do uh, with them as well. So. Um, these things help their book learning. It helps them with their language learning to do play and to strengthen their bodies so that they can learn. If you have any questions about any of these things um, that we've been talking about, about teaching our children, uh, and you have questions maybe about how you can help your child, feel free to contact me and you can comment below. Uh, I can also offer some suggestions with some online resources or maybe some book recommendations if there's something you're looking for uh, for English learning and phonics. 
and I can also help answer any questions you might have about the God's Great Plan Storybook Bible or the Aesop's Fables. So happy to answer any questions you have about that. I have created these videos um, to help parents in Hong Kong right now um, practicing English speaking at home during the school's cancellation from the coronavirus. Um, but these videos can be used at any time and in any country. After a few of the videos, I stopped translating into the Cantonese. Um, so then it's just English for the whole video. If you would like to help me uh, to translate the ideas from this parent video into a language so that families you know can use these videos, um, feel free to contact me about that. And I hope that these videos can be a help to families around the world. Um, enjoy our 30 English fun videos. Uh, thanks for watching and feel free to comment below. Thank you.